morning, everybody. That's my morning view every day. Look at that. I got the sunrise behind me. Ignore the, uh, the final sighting. And I got what will be the sunset later. Whew. So I got an easy one for you guys today. Nothing scruffy. But here's what's pretty cool. Friends of mine over at Tartar, they saw that we'd installed one, two, three gates actually. And I've actually got at least two more gates to do. I haven't picked them up yet. I got to finish the fencing, but they saw that we'd installed three gates and they sent us one of their two-way latches, which is perfect timing because the beefy boys, which we just moved out here, the beefy boys, ribeye and brisket, They've started uh, messing with the little eight foot man. I call it a man gate because it's only eight feet wide. It's for like a four wheeler or something like that. And then there's another gate that's a 12 footer on the other end for a tractor or a skid loader or skid steer or anything, any equipment I need to use in the pasture. Let me put on a hat first though. It has been, gotta find the hat, gotta find the hat, gotta find the hat. What hat do I want? There she is. Much better. Much better. I gotta figure out a way to get my logo on these hats. Let me just show you. Come with me. Walk with me. As you know, the beefy boys moved out here. And they're pretty rambunctious. They're, uh, even our friends at Walker Farm fam, Gary and Cassie, who know cattle, steers and bulls and cows and heifers and whatever else you call them. They even said they were shocked that the beefy boys loaded right into that trailer with just a grain bucket. But I'm pretty sure it's because the beefy boys, they're probably three or 400 pounds, but they're not old enough to know that if they didn't want to do something like get in a trailer, there's nothing I can do short of you know, pressing them and getting them in a, in a corral and, and all that stuff. But if you watch our last video, I didn't have to do anything. I just threw the grain in the back of the trailer and gave them a little encouraging Chuck Norris and they went right in. Anyway, let me show you what I got here. Little man gate. And then I built this in case you guys didn't know, or you don't follow us on social media, which you should. I built this so the boys and I can sit up here and look out over the pasture and we don't have to worry about the dangers of barbed wire and all that stuff. So but this is a man gate, or what I call a man gate. And it's from our friends at Tartar. And yes, the label's on the inside because I didn't want the boys messing with the latch. I actually originally did it. Holes right there. I actually originally had the hinges on this side and then I decided to move my foreboard fence. So I didn't want the boys messing with the latch and the chain and all that on the barbed wire side. So I moved it. But the beefy boys are coming up here and they're Clank, 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 clank. And when I make that noise, they usually come running for grain. But I think they're out over there in the far corner of the pasture eating the good grass this morning. But they're banging on that. And it's just a matter of time before they pop that chain. So, but I'm gonna install this gate latch and it'll make it much more secure. Plus, you know, that chain when the boys go through it and the Tartar provides the chain on their gates. And I picked my gates up from Atwoods, friends of ours too. Tartar provides those chains, but they're not made to hold cattle. They're not. Uh, they're made for a quick, easy fix to whatever. And some people may get away with holding cattle in with them. Maybe a dairy cow that's real docile, you know, something like that. But a bull and a steer, nah. I want the boys, especially Case, when he goes in to work with the chickens or feed somebody or the dog, I want him to be able to go in there and swing that gate latch shut and know that it's secure and he doesn't have to worry about the beefy boys getting out. We do have a pasture within the entire property. The entire eight acres has a fence around it now. So if the beefy boys got out, they can't really get to the road or anything like that, but I also don't want to chase them. <laughs> All right, 
so my neighbor on the other side of the camera has decided he needs to mow his yard right now and i really want to get this up so the beefy boys don't get out and i'm also in the shade for about another hour maybe maybe an hour and a half and then i don't get shade again until the sun sets which is almost it's getting earlier but 7 30 i want to get this done so we're gonna power through i'm gonna speak loud i'm gonna show you what i'm doing and go from there so here's some of the tools you're gonna need to install this pair of pliers because because this attaches to the gate which latches to the fence post and it's like a wild animal in the jungle over there what you doing doing a business that's what she doing just saying leave me alone so let's open this up here and see what we need i got a feeling we can i don't know if i'm going to do like a flat face i'll show you here in a second but i think we're going to need some lag screws but we'll see what tartar sends us here yeah so like i expected which is okay because they don't know what you're drilling into. They can't, they can't send you lag screws because not everybody uses a, a wood fence post. But, uh-oh. Woo! That could have been bad. So this is the latch hardware. It's the latch. This attaches to the gate with these these are shims in case you got a different size bar this is the actual bread and butter the actual bread and butter of the gate actually it goes like that on the post so thankfully i i'm one of those guys i've got jars of can jars and cans of screws and nuts and bolts from other projects so that'll work great i think these are uh 13 millimeter, so should be good. And this is <laughs> this is overkill for screwing into this wood post, but I can't find my attachment for my half inch impact bits. So is what it is. I might have to buy another one. But the idea is this goes on your gate, this goes on your post, and when you swing the gate shut, it latches. And what's nice is it's two way. So whether your gate is pushed open or pulled open, you can get in and out. bracket is right side up or not a little bit lower so you want the catch at the top this is a deadbolt latch and you also want to make sure see how you got square holes okay so it's got a square head on it That. Now the reason it's got a square head on it is so when you start tightening the nuts on the back, that square head catches in the hole and it keeps it from spinning so essentially it's self-tightening. Like I said, this is overkill for this project, but I can't find my half inch attachment or my uh, quarter inch attachment for my impact driver. Take it real slow here. I like it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Maybe since that sticks out a little bit. Might. Oh, it's so close. You really want this to be riding right about there. But I don't know that I have enough. I don't know that I have a shim thin enough that I trust that would be strong enough. Because this two by is going to be too thick. All right, for full transparency, because I, I don't believe in hiding. I don't believe in hiding things, and this is this is a how-to video. And I want to show off what Tartar sent me. So, I don't want to hide anything. But I am going to try these lag hinges, lag bolts, whatever you're going to call them. I am going to drive them in a little bit more to give myself more room. So, we'll pop our gate off real quick. Beefy boys don't come up here and decide they want to try and get out while well, I'm working. In case you guys didn't know, I talked about it in a couple other videos, but you want your top lag bolt to be pointed down. So when your steers, or your cows, or your heifers, or your bulls, or your horses rock that gate, or llamas, donkey poodles, alpacas, I don't know. When they hit that, it uh, doesn't pop off the hinges. And this one's gonna be contrary, I know that for sure. Pretty good. I want to make sure it's level. It's good enough. I'll put it this way. It's it's a little high up here, but over time we all know that that's going to change. So I'd rather it be high here and over time sag a little bit. Let's make sure it fits now with our spacer. put this on like it's in the closed position oh yeah I like it I like it a lot cool all right let's tighten her down make a mark though handy dandy pencil here let's make sure that's level and this is the cut side from the uh, mill, so I know it's level. Here we go. Crown towards my post. And I'm not going to shim it. I'm not going to take some out of here, do a cutaway. What I'm going to do is put three screws, maybe four, right down the middle. Get it left and right of us there. We'll need to pre-drill with these. Pretty 
solid. Then I'll show you a little trick I learned. We're gonna run two in here. We're gonna run them at an angle. To give it balance left to right. We're not gonna bury them. We're just gonna run them until they hit the timber behind them. And then just give them a little, about a quarter inch of a turn. So it keeps that from shifting left to right. You guys see that? Look at that. That's no bueno. There we go. Well, that ain't going anywhere. Sorry if that straight line don't bother you. It don't bother me. <laughs> so we still got clearance. Dry check it one more time. I don't want it too low because it'll catch on the bracket. You want it high, that's kind of what this ramp is for, just to slide up there and catch it. But ultimately you really want it, you really want this just maybe a hair, let me get it, let me get it left to right there. You really want this just a hair higher than the peak of this ramp. Spending a little extra time on this, guys, because I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to gates. I don't like them sagging. I don't like them moving around. So, I want this to be in there like swimwear. This is overkill for this job, but that's what I got. Yes, I'm feathering that trigger so I don't just ruin my shim. These are 13 millimeter lag screws. They came out of uh, lag bolts, but they came, actually it is a screw. 13 millimeter lag screws, they came out of a gate, uh, like a hinge set for a privacy fence. And I didn't end up needing all of them for that particular application, so I kept them. I'm glad I did. Like I said, I'm feathering this. Could just bury that if I wanted to. Right, let's crank it up a little bit though. Oh yeah. I dig it. Yeah, I like that a lot. Shoo. Good, strong gate. So guys, I really, really want to thank our friends at Tartar 
because we installed three gates and we still got three to go, they sent this over. And I absolutely love this thing. Here's the item number. And again, I believe I've got, well, let's just show you. There's the gate I'm working with. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I've got umpteen million more projects to do. Oh, I like that. I can even lean on it now. That's solid. I've got umpteen more projects to do. I don't even know where to begin. I basically just picked the spot where the, I have a pig out. Yeah, I got a, I got a piglet out. I have two piglets out. Man, these guys are little stankers. But anyway. I basically just pick a project based on where the shade is and then I do that one until the shade is gone. But I sincerely, sincerely want to thank Tartar for sending over this latch. Uh, they also sent us a hat and we look forward to working with them in the future on more projects. I'm even working on them because I know they're going to see this video, but man, I'd really like one of them fire rings, but we don't have them in stock around here. You know, the little three foot fire ring. Uh, it's also, it's, it's almost a uh, s'more season. Don't worry, Woody. In just a few hours, you'll be sitting around a campfire with Andy making delicious hot schmoes. They're called s'mores, Buzz. Right, right, of course. Really, really like one. Sincerely appreciate it. We actually need one, two. We need three more, Tartar, if this video uh, does you justice. <laughs> we need three more. So we've just got the little economy gates right now. We don't have any of the heavy duties, but we are going to build a corral with some of their heavy duty panels. Uh, at a later date when we get the next pasture built. He's got animals all over the farm, just noises from everywhere. Y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Go check out Tartar. I'm going to tag them. I'm going to put their website in here, their Instagram, their Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, they were great to work with. They shipped us the stuff out in like a couple days, and, and I needed it quickly too. I mean, that's the thing when you're working with companies, and they say, hey, you want to try this? You know, I, sometimes I don't have time to wait a week for them to ship something. This was two dayed. I saw it on the box. So the box laying right there. They two dayed this out to us and uh, shipped it straight to the house too. So that's awesome. But sincerely appreciate you guys. Don't work too hard. Until next time. Deuces. Beefy. Real beefy.